And good evening and welcome to this edition of Train Aficionado Live. I'm Jonathan Higgins, live from our studios right here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, tonight joining me in the studio, of course, is Watson. He's in his bed right behind me. And we've got a great show underway for you tonight. So what I've done is I put together a list of some of my favorite uh, train movies and shows uh, of course, there's tons of them out there. There's a lot of them, but you know, we only have an hour. So I've looked up some cool facts about some of these movies and shows. I want to share a little bit of my list with you. Of course, your list may be slightly different. So of course, you know, include some of your favorite movies and shows that are involving trains, of course, in the comments or in the live chat, as many of you are joining tonight. Make sure you don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Since you're on YouTube right now, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up on the video as well. So let's uh, get the show underway and let's take a look at tonight's presentation. It is showtime. It's movie night. And Train Aficionado presents the Silver Screen Express, where the trains are the stars of the show. So we want to make sure we tell you about a couple of things that are going on. So we got a big event tomorrow night at the Cincinnati Railroad Club. Uh, Chevy at Hill night is tomorrow night, Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. We're going to have three presentations. If you're not from the area and you're interested in learning a little bit more about railroad history in Cincinnati, don't worry. If you go over to the Cincinnati Railroad Club's YouTube channel, the first pre two presentations will actually be broadcasted live over YouTube. So you'll be able to watch the presentations. Uh, Chris Mayhew, the president of the club, uh, will be uh, featuring a slideshow presentation of photography of Don Patrick. Um, everything to do with Chevy Hill. Also, Father Dale Paterka will start his presentation at 8.40. Um, he'll be presenting Bridges of Cheviot Hill. And then Jim Corbett. And this will be a presentation that will be strictly for the live audience at the Cincinnati Union Terminal. will be at 9 p.m. And he'll round out the evening with more photos from Cheviot Hill. So the meeting starts at 7.30 inside of the Cincinnati Union Terminal, which is otherwise known as the Museum Center, inside the Newsreel Theater. So if you're local from the Cincinnati area, by all means, come out, join us for the 7.30 meeting. At 8 o'clock, we'll have our first presentation, 8.40, our next one, and then at 9 p.m., our third and final presentation, our highlights and photos from Cheviot Hill. And then if you're anywhere across the country, around the world, watching this broadcast, you can watch it, the two first two presentations, live on YouTube. And those are Eastern Time, 8 p.m. and 8.40. So already the videos are, you know, the, the live feed videos are, are sitting in place on the YouTube channel. So basically, roll up to the first video at 8 o'clock, watch that, and then once the second presentation starts just hop over to that channel there'll be a probably a little bit of intermission in between the first and the second and then of course Jim Corbett's presentation will be for the uh, studio audience that is right there at Cincinnati Union Terminal so some really cool stuff uh, the Cincinnati Railroad Club make sure you hit the subscribe button over in their channel as well we would greatly appreciate it the uh, theater is handicap accessible um, so you're able to uh, get into the theater. Um, the Newsreel Theater is the smaller theater of the two. So definitely uh, uh, come out to the Cincinnati Union Terminal and uh, hopefully you're able to join us for the Cincinnati Railroad Club presents Cheviot Hill Night. And once again, that'll be tomorrow night, April the 4th, 2024. So really cool night there. I'm hosting a in-person class at Cincinnati Union Terminal again. So um, a free scanner clinic. So if you're uh, using the 125 AT or the, the new radios, the 160 and the 260, 
I will be hosting a scanner programming clinic for rail fans. So that'll be Saturday, May the 11th, 2024, from 3 to 5. Limited space is available. You have to sign up. This will be inside of the club room for the, uh, for the, for the Cincinnati Railroad Club. So this will be an in-person uh, class. Uh, I will be going over how to manually program these scanners and also using software as well. And then I may be, uh, depending on the size of class, I may be able to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with various people. Um, but that'll be from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, May the 11th is National Train Day. And uh, our club room is facing the north side of the building and you're able to see the yard which is really cool and then there may be uh, something else going on a private function after that which if you do sign up for the class and you're able to come out uh, we'll fill you in on that so that's uh, trainaficionado.com forward slash events so definitely do that <clears throat> so we've got a couple of events going on uh, for Train Aficionado. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So the first rail fan outing will be at Ludlow, Kentucky, at the Ludlow um, Tower. It's a rail fanning pavilion, um, and that'll be on April the 6th. And then we're heading May the 4th to Hamilton, Ohio. Going to be rail fanning at Butler Street right along the main line there. And then on May the 11th, the Cincinnati Union Terminal Scanner Clinic for Rail Fans. June the 1st, Witten Place, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and then July 13th is to be announced. So there'll be a, 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 a Buckeye Bluegrass Express 2024 tour there. And then I head up further north on August the 10th for Summer Rail in Marion, Ohio. So I'll be making my way around uh, Cincinnati and then outwards and north and south, east, west, in every direction uh, during the spring, summer, and fall. These are the current dates. I'll be adding more dates as, uh, as they come available. If you want to see where I'm going to be, um, definitely go to trainaficionado.com forward slash events. All right, so it's showtime. Let's take a look at some of the movies that are on the list tonight. So it's The Train Aficionado Presents The Silver Screen Express, where the trains are the stars of the show. So please sit back and sit behind the yellow line. All right. So I've already seen somebody mention this movie. Classic. Um, the Silver Streak. Uh, this movie came out in 1976, and of course, two comedy legends, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, starred in this movie. And this wasn't the only movie that the, the uh, comedy duo uh, starred in together, but this is the one that involved a train, Silver Streak. Now, there's some interesting uh, tidbits about this, but if you're not familiar with the movie... Um, it's a, a long-distance train trip where a man finds romance and finds himself in quite a bit danger. Um, he uh, sees that you know somebody gets murdered on the train, and uh, the killer is trying to pursue him. So, <laughs> what an interesting uh, movie! And of course, it takes place on the train. And, of course, he eventually meets uh, Richard Pryor's character. Now, an interesting trivia thing is originally the film was meant to be filmed in the United States. But, however, the National Rail Passenger Corporation, a.k.a. Amtrak, feared that the advertising publicity would kind of put them into a bad light. So they ended up not doing it. And the producers were forced to work with Canadian Pacific Railroad. And they disguised one of their UP Rail uh, locomotives to be, you know, what it was painted in the movie. And they shot the exteriors along the uh, uh, CP right-of-ways. So it's really 
uh, a really cool movie. I mean, it's an older movie, 1976. So it's well over, my word, it's almost 50 years old. Wow. It's a great movie. Richard Pryor and um, Gene Wilder are just absolutely hilarious together. Um, so if you haven't seen this movie, make sure you check it out. It's a really good, good movie. I highly uh, recommend uh, checking it out. How could this not be on the list? Of course, Tom Hanks, phenomenal actor. Um, you know, Polar Express won so many awards. Um, they even did it in IMAX 3D. Uh, it's a staple during the holidays. Of course, you know, the Polar Express, if you remember, it's on Christmas Eve. A boy embarks on a magical uh, adventure to the North Pole on the Polar Express. And while he learns about friendship, bravery, and the spirit of Christmas. So this a movie actually premiered at the Chicago International Film Festival on October the 13th of of 2004. Wow. So this movie is uh, celebrating, what is it, 20 years? Wow. So a really great movie, great for the holidays to watch. Uh, the sound is phenomenal. Um, I remember, you know, when I was over at my friend's house, uh, Dan, he had a surround sound system uh, in his house, his kids were upstairs, and he said, watch this. So, of course, he fast-forwarded to the uh, to the locomotive part, cranked the volume all the way up in the surround sound system. The house literally shook, you know, almost like there was a train right in the house. The kids came flying down the stairs, and, uh, you know, he, he had Polar Express, you know, he fast-forwarded to a certain section, and uh, they actually won uh, uh, some awards for sound, you know, because they they tried to you know capture that steam locomotive sound. Um, quite a great movie. Um, highly recommend seeing this. The next one on the list is a bit interesting. It's not a movie, but it's a TV show that aired on the History Channel. Now it was only for one season. Uh, Matt, which you see there in the photograph there, he is actually a uh, railroad conductor, and he actually hosted the show, and it was for one season, eight episodes, and he went on various trains from the Amtrak uh, Acela to the Circus Train and a few others, uh, really took you behind the scenes, and this was uh, produced by the History Channel Um only ran for one season in 2008. It is out there on DVD. I'm not too sure if it's streaming anywhere. But it's a, it's a really cool um, show that was done by the History Channel. The eight episodes are about an hour long. Minus, you know, commercial breaks. So it's probably about 40 some odd minutes. Definitely a great watch. I do have this in my collection. As of all the movies that are in uh, this collection here. Let's take a look at our next one. All right, so this wasn't the original Taking of Pelham 123. Uh, Walter Matthau uh, starred in the original uh, Taking of Pelham 123. Uh, the second movie was done in 2009 and starred Denzel Washington and John Travolta basically taking place in New York City. So, armed men hijack a New York City subway train, holding the passengers hostage in return for a ransom. And it turns out an ordinary work dispatcher, Walter, which is played by uh, Denzel Washington, uh, basically faces off with a mastermind uh, behind the crime, which is John Travolta. Production began in March of 2008 with all the cast and crew having to attend track safety courses taught by the MTA personnel. Much of the film was uh, shot and took place in the subway line on the active tracks. 
So they were down in the tunnels shooting this. A large portion of the film was shot on the New York Transit Museum local track. So I haven't been to the museum, but basically they have a museum in one of the underground stations, which are no longer used. And they do have a track that accesses the, um, the museum. So now you're going to know that, you know, this is, you know, the original, from what I've heard, is just as good or better. Um, so I do have the original. I haven't watched it as of yet with Walter Matthau, so I'm definitely going to check that out at some point. Um, and then this was a remake of the original. A really good movie. I mean, Denzel Washington, I'm a super fan of Denzel. Uh, loved him in so many different movies. He actually makes it on the list twice tonight. Um, probably some of you have already guessed, you know, what the next movie is. You know, so we're going in order. So this is in 20... Uh, 2009 so let's go to the next slide unstoppable two years later Denzel Washington and Chris Pine are an unstoppable one million tons a hundred thousand lives and 100 minutes the train literally plays the villain and the star of this movie. Chris Pine and, and uh, Denzel Washington basically play supporting actors to the train. Lots of great tidbits and facts about this movie. Um, so, many of you know that this is a train that basically you know, goes out of control, unmanned, traveling you know at fast speeds um, this is actually inspired on a true story crazy eights an unmanned train this incident happened on may the 15th of 2001 about 22 years ago uh you know in ohio wallbridge ohio a train was in the yard and made its way 66 miles through Northwest Ohio with no one at the controls. An engineer got out of the train, just like what you've seen in the movie. It was moving slow to throw a switch. He mistakenly believed he set the train's dynamic brake, and he didn't. The the two real train cars, I mean, the, the two trains, you know, contained, you know, hazardous materials, just like it was in the movie. Um, and let me just see, I'm just looking through my notes. So, shooting the film, they actually um, filmed this on railroad lines. Uh, the Western New York and Pennsylvania Railroad on the Buffalo Line. For two months, they shot this during the daytime. All the normal freight service ran at night. So basically, they had the right-of-way during the daytime for two months. Uh, the bridge that you see in the movie, the elevated bridge on the curve is the B&O Railroad Viaduct in between Bel Air, Ohio and Benwood, West Virginia. Interesting facts with this movie. Denzel Washington did all of his own stunts. So walking on the train, on the top of the train, um, he learned how to drive the train. He actually drove it on the right-of-way. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. I actually watched a, a, a documentary last night, about an hour long, was on YouTube, uh, all about the movie and some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. When they derailed the train in the movie, one of the trains, 
they really derailed it. They didn't use computer generated graphics. They actually derailed it. Um, the director, which is escaping escaping me right now, is uh, um, God. I can't think of his name. Scott. I'm drawing a blank right now on the director. But he wanted to make this as realistic as possible. When he was shooting um, many of the scenes, there was a bunch of cameras. When they derailed the train in one of the scenes that are in the movie, they had one take. So they had to make sure they set up a whole bunch of cameras to capture the whole entire derailment because they could only do it once. Now, the thing was, is they were able to derail the train. They basically had, uh, you know, took things apart, made it lighter, made, and controlled the derailment to a degree. It was, you know, really awesome, you know, being able to see all that. So they actually um, leased several locomotives uh, to shoot this film. Uh, Canadian Pacific Railway locomotives, Wheeling and Lake Erie locomotives, and uh, Southwest Pennsylvania Railroad had some locomotives that they leased to them as well. And they did have multiple... Uh, locomotives painted in the uh, the AVR paint scheme, the make-believe railroad. So there were multiple 777s and 767. But yeah, it was really cool to be able to watch all that. So uh, unstoppable, phenomenal movie. Definitely check it out. If you do end up buying it and you do have still a, a Blu-ray player, buy it in Blu-ray. Highly recommend buying it in Blu-ray because um, it's one of those movies you want to be able to see in 4K, Blu-ray, and it's really cool. And basically, it's non-stop, you know, from the first scene all the way to the last. So it'll keep you at the edge of your seat. This is a show that I watched on AMC, and it had five seasons, ran uh, from 2011 to 2016, Hell on Wheels. It's about building the railroad across the country. So, of course, it has some of the characters that were a part of building the railroads worked into the storyline. Uh, depicted many of the various things you know that happened while building the railroad across the country. So, as you can see here, the main character, Cullen Bohanna, uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right, um, basically was just out of the Civil War. He was on a mission to find the people that murdered his family. So, in the process, you know, he joined the railroad. And started helping to build a railroad from east to west. Five seasons, very well written, awesome show. Um, definitely check it out. It's well worth the watch. Um, I've watched uh, it twice already, from start to finish. Um, definitely, probably would watch it again. Um, great actors, you know, just wonderful writing. Um, Hell on Wheels it aired on AMC. I'm not too sure if many of you have watched Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, which I'm huge fans of those shows as well that AMC ran. Um, and of course, this didn't stay around as long as The Walking Dead. So, you know, it was five seasons, basically nice and packaged. It didn't go beyond its shelf life. I'll leave it at that. And this aired, you know, from 2011 to 2016. Agatha Christie's Oriental Express, Murder on the Oriental Express. This movie has been done uh, twice. A whole bunch of different actors in here. Um, as you can see on the list, um, a lot of big names. Judy Dench, um, Michelle Pfeiffer, Johnny Depp. Um, <laughs> star power. Um, and of course, it's one of these uh, who done it type of movies. 
it almost reminds me of Clue. You know, you know, you're playing the game of Clue. You get the cast of characters. You're playing the detective, trying to figure out who caused the murder. Um, shot beautifully. This is another movie you probably want to get in Blu-ray or watch it in in uh, high definition. It's certainly a great movie. Um, but it's based on the Agatha Christie book, Murder on the Oriental Express. Um, I haven't seen the original. I have seen this one. Um, I'll definitely have to check out the original. More recent, 2018, uh, The Commuter. Typical Liam Neeson type of movie. Um, it's a thriller. Keeps you at the edge of your seat. Some interesting things that I learned about this movie. None of it took place on an actual train. They used everything was on a soundstage. So they, you know, they had a mock-up train car. Everything was shot in a soundstage. Nothing was used out in a main line, which kind of disappointed me. But they did a pretty decent job with green screens and what have you to be able to shoot it. It's an interesting movie. Um, vast majority of it takes place on the train. Uh, Liam Neeson plays an, ex an insurance salesperson, uh, ex-cop, caught up in a life-threatening uh, conspiracy on the train. He rides this train as a daily commuter, basically from New York and I believe to Connecticut, if I remember correctly from the movie. Um, but yeah, he revealed that uh, on a talk show, no scenes were filmed on board of actual train. It was all shot on a soundstage with a mock-up, you know, of the train car um, and slightly redressed. Um, outdoor scenery was added in post-production with the help of green screens. There we go. Just a couple of movies to kind of check out, a couple of shows for you to check out as well. Um, there's tons of movies out there. There's tons of shows involving trains. Just wanted to kind of whet your appetite, give you a couple of different ones that I've seen that I would recommend. Um, there are several movies that I want to be able to see, um, you know, that involve trains. Uh, there's tons of them out there. Uh, but yeah, those are some of the big ones that I have in my movie collection. Uh, I'm sure some of you can come up with some of your own. So any questions or comments tonight from the live audience? I'm just going to take a look at you know the questions and comments. Um, David is joining us. Chris Schultz. Uh, uh, Bear Bull is here. UP. Uh, 1934 Adams here. Let's go rail fanning. Uh, Paul is in the house. Uh, let's see. Lincoln is here. Uh, Todd, welcome. I am is here. So a lot of people in the house. So we've got a really cool spring and summer events coming up. So if you're local to the, I got the wrong graphic up. If you're local to the area, um, if you're local to the area, definitely come out and uh, meet me at one of the rail fanning spots I'm going to be at. Uh, never been the summer rail. This is something that occurred in Cincinnati for many years and then moved up to Marion, Ohio. Marion, Ohio has got a cute little town. They run summer rail uh, inside of a theater. So you're able to see people's produced uh, videos synced up with music. It's really cool. And it's and it's shown in a movie theater. So you get that whole experience being able to see um, those videos. So people submit it to Summer Rail and then they're scheduled the time during the day. There's a train show there as well. And then, of course, rail fanning. How can you go wrong with rail fanning trackside um, in Marion, Ohio? You're able to go out to the... Uh, to the station uh, the switch tower i believe will be open during certain times so some really cool stuff there i'm really excited never been to summer rail this is going to be my first time doing that so i'm really excited about doing that as well uh 
I'm just trying to think of some other things to mention. So yeah, so if you're able to come out to see me at one of these rail fanning spots uh, that I'm going to be at, I haven't announced July. Uh, I plan on doing something in September. Uh, maybe doing two things in September. I just got to see how the schedule plays out. A lot of my events are going to be on Saturdays on the weekends because I work during the week. So definitely come out and uh, enjoy me if you're able to. Uh, I'm going to be doing some, hopefully, some classes and some presentations in the fall for the Cincinnati Railroad Club. Uh, I plan on doing a presentation for the Cincinnati Railroad Club myself. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing, but it'll be streamed live on YouTube. So I'll let you guys know. Um, so Adam's mentioning for July 13th, you should come up to uh, uh, Michigan. Uh, I would have to see how far away that is. Let me jot that down where that is. Um, D. I'll take a look at that, um, Adam. I'll be able to see. And you said about 20, uh, 25 to 30 trains a day. Okay, good to know. All right. But yeah, um, I'll see what I can do. Unfortunately, you know, I do have Watson, which left the studio. He went somewhere else. But he would have to travel with me um, if I do any of these rail fanning adventures uh, farther away. And during the summer and, you know, I can't leave him in the truck, you know, so, you know, if I'm doing anything long distance, I have to have somebody come out with me or, you know, if it's cool enough, he can hang out in the truck. Um, I haven't seen the, uh, the 4501 documentary. I need to check that out. Uh, let's go rail fanning. If you have my email address, uh, is it something on YouTube? Um, you can email me at trainaficionado at gmail.com. I'd love to be able to check that out as well. So that'll be really cool. But yeah, we're really looking forward to doing these events trackside. Let me uh, do a couple of slides. We'll come back. If there's any, uh, any questions or comments, we can certainly uh, do that here. Let me just uh, roll into the next slide. So Cheviot Hill Night is a big event coming up for the Cincinnati Railroad Club. Uh, packed night. Actually have three presenters. Um, I will be running the behind the scenes uh, stuff, you know, with running the presentation. So it goes out on the internet. So Chris Mayhew, which is the president of the club, will be featuring a digital presentation uh, photography from Don Patrick. Then at 8.40, Father Dale Paterka will be uh, presenting his uh, Chevy Hill photos, Bridges of Chevy Hill. And then Jim Corbett will round out the night with an in-person traditional slideshow presentation with more photos from Chevy Hill. So the Chris May uh, Mayhew presentation and Father Dale will be streamed online on the Cincinnati Railroads Club's YouTube channel. So definitely um, check that out uh, on their YouTube channel starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and 8.40. So it'll be two separate video presentations live. The meeting starts at 7.30 at the Cincinnati Union Terminal in the Newsreel Theater. So if you're able to uh, come out, definitely uh, come out and visit us. Was that Watson coming back? Yeah, I think he's, I think he's behind me. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's there. He's behind me. Um, so definitely uh, come out and join us at the Cincinnati uh, Union Terminal. Uh, should be a great presentation. And it's inside the Newsreel Theater. Uh, once again, hosting a clinic uh, to the Cincinnati area. So if you're from the Cincinnati area, this is a sign up. Uh, class because it's uh, space is limited. If you've got any of the radios that are on the screen, such as the 125AT, the BCD 160DN or 260DN, which are now shipping to people, um, definitely bring that along. I'm going to show you how to program it manually and how to use it on software as well. Uh, the software that I'll be using is the Butel software, ARC uh, one. Uh, 25 or ARC um, 
is it 260? I think that's what Butel called it. Uh, ARC 260. I'll be using that to be able to show you how to program the radio and get it all set up for the Cincinnati area. I'll get to your question, uh, Adam, in a second. I do see it there. Um, here are the dates uh, that are coming up for the Buckeye Bluegrass Express 2024 tour. Uh, Ludlow, Kentucky for April the 6th, May 4th, Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, National Train Day will be at the Cincinnati Union Terminal for a scanner clinic for rail fans in the uh, Cincinnati Railroad Club's club room, which has a phenomenal view of the yard. So you're able to get some uh, rail fanning in there as well. Winton Place. Whittington Place on uh, the on June 1st, July 13th to be announced, August the 10th, Summer Rail at Marion, Ohio. So those are some of the dates. Um, let's see. We're going to go to some of your questions and then we'll wrap it up for the evening. So I see here we do have a question from Adam. Um, is the BC75XLT a good radio? I've seen everybody talking about it. I own the 125AT. Are there any differences? Hold on one second. I don't know why I'm auto-focusing. Whoa, it's getting really bad. Hold on one second. There we go. All right. <laughs> so, live show. Um, so, the 125 AT is more superior to the 75 XLT. Um, so, the reason being is the 125 AT supports PL tones, and it has alpha tagging. Um, so you're able to put a text tag along with the frequency on the radio's display. So you're able to see both of those things. Where with the 75 XLT, it doesn't have alpha tagging at all. So for spending, the 75 is now discontinued. It's no longer being sold unless you're buying it used. Um, but the 125 AT is probably the best radio for rail fanning as of right now. Um, once the railroads go, do go to digital um, everywhere, see you later, Watson, the 160DN and 260DN will be probably the Cadillacs of the rail fans. Um, but hopefully, you know, for we have a little bit more time with the 125AT, which is great. But the 125AT is, you know, back in the day, the 75, when it was out, was about 100 bucks. For $30 more, you could buy the 125 AT, and it's got the alpha tag display, which is huge. I love being able to see, you know, I'll program in all the AAR channels and the first 97 channels, and then, um, and then the next uh, banks that I would program in there is the known frequencies. I'll put Norfolk Southern Road, Norfolk Southern Dispatch, you know, you can put in alpha tags. So the one, 125AT allows you to be able to program alpha tags. Just like on the 260 and the 160DN, those radios also allow to do um, text tags as well. Now, I was thinking about doing another show on the 160 and 260. I'm not too sure if there's any interest in um, me doing a deeper dive on those radios. I mean, we've done it once about seven months ago. I'm not too sure if you guys are interested. Uh, yes, I am. Um, you're mentioning about uh, Jim Krause. Jim, you're getting another mention on the Train Aficionado show. He's probably watching Survivor tonight. I'm competing with Survivor for him, but he usually watches it after. Um, yes, so he's currently working on a book, and he's putting finishing touches on that. He has said once he's done with the book, he's going to come on, talk about the l and Railroad. He's discovered so many interesting stories and nuggets um that he's putting together this book um so he's really uh excited about you know having this book published and of course you know promoting it on here 
Let me just see what else. Uh, how about a show on railroad documentaries? I would have to start watching those. But yeah, that's definitely a, a good suggestion there. Uh, let's go rail fanning. So I'll have to free up some more time for that as well. But Jim Krause, you know, he'll be hopefully uh, releasing a book shortly and then he'll be on here to promote it. He's actually going to sell it at a couple of different train shows. Um, so you can even, if you're from the area, you can get an autograph signed book from him. Uh, but yeah, railroad documentaries, I'll have to try to find some more time to be able to watch some of those as well. I'm not too sure, Chris, what you're mentioning. Um, I've been using the something uh, scanner on the railroads. I'm not too sure what you're mentioning. I'm guessing that you're, you're mentioning about an antenna. Uh, the Smiley antenna, I don't get a dime from them, but that antenna works extremely well on the railroads. I've even had people meet me rail fanning that have tried the antenna, and they love it. So the Smiley uh, Railroad VHF antenna that's centered on the 160 megahertz works really well on the railroads. Any other questions or anything else that anybody else wants to talk about before we wrap it up for this evening? Tonight's presentation, we were talking about uh, Train Aficionado presents the Silver Screen Express, where the trains are the stars of the show. And of course, this is a small list. There's a lot of train movies out there, but I just wanted to give you a couple of my suggestions. Uh, definitely check it out. Unstoppable is probably one of my favorites. I mean, Denzel Washington is one of my favorite actors, so just to be able to see him in one of uh, a train movie is super cool. Uh, Chris is uh, asking it to come up to Lansing, Michigan. Um, at some point, I hope to. It's about a five, over a five-hour drive for me. Um, oh, the SDS is on the railroads. Yes. Yeah, the SDSs, you know, of course, were made uh, for digital. So meaning the SDS 100 and 200 should work okay on the railroads. But keep in mind that, you know, some people... You know, we'll say, of course, the 125 AT probably kicks its by because it's, you know, it's an analog receiver. And, of course, you know, the SDS 100 and 200 were made for digital. So that was a primary focus when beta testing the radio to make sure that it, it, it addressed the, um, the, uh, the digital concerns. Uh, the Rimtronics uh, 843S is I'm trying to remember the model number but i believe that's the tri-band antenna i've tested that if that's the tri-band antenna I, the the 843s it doesn't ring a bell i don't remember the model number of the antenna but i've tried all the rimtronics antennas they work really well so if you're looking i think that's the tri-band if i remember correctly jeffrey um jeffy i should say um that should work uh really well uh, Adam is asking about the SR330. Yet again, it's a, it's a low-end scanner with no alpha tagging. So still, you know, I would still go with the, uh, the 125AT. The SR330C, I'm not too sure why that came into the stable of radios to replace the 75. Uh it doesn't have alpha tagging. That's one of my big drawbacks on that. And I love the alpha tagging for the railroads. Uh, Todd's mentioning the 895 scanner for the railroads out here in the hill area. Great workhorse, the 895. It's a great scanner. Highly recommend that. Um, somebody asked me about Danny Harmon. Uh, I've... I've hope to have him back on the show again uh i will email him and see if he has any availability in the next upcoming months uh would you like to do a show on model railroading yes yes we'd love to be able to do something with model railroading uh, maybe have somebody come on and share some photos or even if they're able to send me some video would love to be able to do that i mean we could have like we have the equivalent of show off our shack 
we could actually do an evening where you show off your model railroad. That could be something that I could solicit out there that you send photos and a brief description and then we load those photos up into a slide deck and show them off. And of course, you know, we can just, you know, take a look at these photos of, of various people's layouts. That's something that I could hopefully put together um, and uh, have some people, hopefully enough people submit photos and we can make a show of it. Um, I would love to be able to have somebody on, you know, that's to talk about model railroading as well. I mean, that's definitely a, a huge part of our hobby as many rail fans have dipped their toe into model railroading as well. So lots of good stuff there. Any other questions or comments before we wrap it up for this evening? I will be back next week for uh, train for the scanner guys. We're watching the train aficionado live right now. So next week will be the scanner guys, which will be uh, the 10th. Train aficionado will be back on the 17th. And then another episode for April the 24th will, of course, be the Scanner Guys. So if you're trying to remember, all right, when is the Scanner Guys? When's the Train Aficionado shows? So the first and third Wednesday of every month is Train Aficionado. The second and fourth Wednesday of every month is the Scanner Guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, um, Train Aficionado, right here. And of course, to the scanner guys, and then check out the videos tomorrow night. I'll be uh, working behind the scenes, bringing live digital presentations for the Cincinnati Railroad Club. So make sure you tune in tomorrow night. And then, of course, if you're in the area, come out to Lolo, Kentucky. Meet me at the Rail Fan uh, Pavilion there in the tower. Would love to be able to meet you. I will be there uh, from. 8 a.m. until noon. So stop by anytime during that time. I'll be there uh, talking to, to anybody that's up there and hanging out and hopefully seeing some trains. I will do, I will have some new business cards hopefully tomorrow. They were supposed to come in today. So um, you can grab one of those from me as well. Uh, Adam did ask a question about the, uh, the base mobile radio, the base... Uh, the alarm clock radio. Yes, uh, you could use that certainly for uh, rail fanning, the 365 alarm clock scanner. Um, it's it's great, great desktop scanner. Works really well. Um, I've used that before. I don't have one of those in my own collection. Uh, Bear Bowl, a uh, model railroad presentation would be cool. Yes. So if you guys actually have model trains... And you want to send me some layout photos, you can. Uh, the email address is uh, trainaficionado at gmail.com. That's trainaficionado at gmail.com. You can send me photos and a brief description, you know, of what your railroads, you know, what error, what you're trying to do, you know, short description. And then we can put together a slide deck. I may actually start soliciting on social media for people to submit their model railroad uh, layout photos and then we can do it as a presentation on here love to have somebody come on and talk about model railroading and how to get involved and what you can do with it as well so uh, certainly some we can dip our toe into model railroading uh, right here on the show well i thank you all so much for watching the presentation i hope you have a great night we will catch you again uh, next week for the scanner guys and then the following week for train aficionado live for myself, have a great night and safe rail fanning out there. Um, be safe. We'll catch you again very soon and hopefully catch you in Ludlow, Kentucky. Have a great night. Thank you so much for joining. Be safe.